Hello and welcome to today's lecture. In this lecture, we are going to start unit number one, and this will be the first lecture of this series. So let's start with the unit one introduction, introduction to RCC. So in this chapter, we are going to discuss following points. First is the introduction to RCC, then objectives of RCC design, philosophies of design and their relative advantages and disadvantages, types and classifications of limit states, characteristic strength and characteristic load, load factor and partial safety factors, limit state of serviceability, significance of deflection and IS recommendations. Let us begin our lecture with the first point that is introduction to RCC. So as we know that the cement concrete is a composite building material which is made from a combination of aggregates both uh, coarse aggregates as well as fine aggregates with a binding material such as cement. And the most common form of the concrete which uh, we normally use in our day to day life is consists of uh, mineral aggregates uh, like the basalt aggregates which is available in uh, Ampala mountain in Maharashtra along with the river sand and the Portland cement along with the water. This is the common materials which we are using in our day to day life to prepare a concrete. And for this, we are mixing these all materials that is uh, cement, uh, coarse aggregate, fine aggregate and water. And after mixing up these all materials, the cement hydrates in presence of water which produce a hard mass which, which just resembles like a stone. So we know that the hardened concrete has a very high compressive strength but at the same time this possesses a low tensile strength. So by knowing this, why there is a need of reinforced cement concrete. So for that, just we'll take one example. So let us consider there is a concrete beam which is simply supported and suppose this con concrete beam is subjected to an external load in the form of point load. So when this load is applied on this beam, naturally the beam will get deformed like this. So as this beam is going to deform like this, then due to this, the total section, whatever section that we have considered here, this total section subjected to two types of stresses. So as we know that, that as the beam is going to uh, subjected to a load, external load, which is acting in downward direction due to this, it is deformed in shape like this. So the top fibers of this beam, top fibers of this beam are subjected to compressive stresses. So it means that these top fibers are coming together at the top fibers. So it means that this total portion will be in compression. This will be in compression. And at the same time, the bottom fibers will be in tension. The bottom fibers will be in tension. So it means that the bottom portion of this beam section will be in tension. So as we know that the concrete is very strong to carry the compressive stresses. So the whatever concrete which is present in this top portion, that much that concrete will carry the compressive stresses very effectively. But as we know that the concrete is not able to sustain in tensile stresses. So what happens that as the load increases, the concrete starts cracking from the bottom. So likewise, there may be a formation of cracks from the soffit. Soffit means it is a bottom portion of the beam. So, as again, if you uh, continues to uh, increase the load, some cracks may pro propagate to the top of the beam and as this crack reaches to the top, then 
the rupture of this beam will take place so it means that that due to the lack of carrying uh, tensile stress carrying capacity of this concrete section the total section will get will get fills so to avoid this that as we know that to that concrete is not able to take the tensile stresses we can add one more material which is very easily available to us so that is the reinforcement these reinforcements are made up of steel and we know that steel is very good in tension that it can carry the tensile stresses very effectively so if we add some amount of reinforcement in the concrete just like uh, at the bottom that is in the in the tension zone then what happens that whatever tension is going to develop in this concrete in the lower part of the section this total tension will be carried by the reinforcements so that's why normally what we do that in a plain cement concrete we are adding the reinforcement and this reinforcement is known as the rebars in tension zone so which creates a composite material which will carry the all kind of tensile forces on the loads very effectively and this composite section is called as a reinforced concrete so that's why this rcc is stands for reinforced cement concrete so it is a composite material which is made of of concrete and reinforcement so which is a very good material this concrete possesses a very good properties one of which is the moldability but as we know that the concrete can be molded in various shapes but again it is limited to that if we have a suitable form work in that particular shape then we can easily give any shape to this concrete that is the very good advantage or very good properties of this concrete at the same time this concrete is having very high durability if this concrete whatever concrete that we are going to prepare is prepared with due care with very good quality of material and uh, good uh, quality control then that con concrete will be having a very high durability it is having a very good bed, uh, appearance also it have a very good fire resistance because this concrete is a, a bad conductor of heat and at the same time this concrete is a very economical so by observing all this advantages or the properties of concrete the architect scope and imaginations have widened to a great extent due to all these properties just like that it is having a very good moldability that you can cast any shape element it is having very good durability very good appearance fire resistance and economical that's why these all properties have helped to build several attractive shell forms you know, several attractive shell forms and other curved structures also the very good example of which is uh, just a very beautiful structure which has been uh, constructed uh, very long years back in india so just you have to name the name of the structure and location of the structure just i'm giving a hint that this structure is located in india in india so you have to write the name of this structure in the tweets again for a strong ductile and durable construction the reinforcement uh, shall have high strength high tensile strain and good bond to the concrete and the thermal compatibility it means that that to achieve a very good uh, quality of concrete that whatever reinforcement that we are going to use it must possess some uh, good properties just like that whatever reinforcement we are going to use that reinforcement bars or rebars should have a high strength they must have the high tensile strength at the same time they must possess the very good tensile strain also and very important point that the bond between the concrete and the reinforcement should be a very good 
because if the bond is very good then that reinforcement will be very tightly bonded to the concrete and the whatever tensile stresses which are going to develop in the concrete these all tensile stresses will be effectively and efficiently transferred to the reinforcement so that's why the structures can behave very efficiently during their lifetime okay and at the same time the thermal compatibility should be there that the whatever uh, because we know that uh, steel when it is heated it loses its strength you know? so that by considering that property we have to select the steel which is having a very good thermal capability also and so the building comp that by using the reinforced cement concrete we can construct uh, various building components like the slabs wall panels beams columns foundations and frames the reinforced cement concrete uh, can be casted or the elements uh, casted in situ that is actually on site or we may cast the components in the factory which are called as a pre cast concreted elements so it is also possible in case of reinforced cement concrete however its uh, role that is the reinforced cement concrete's role in several straight line structural forms like multi story frames bridges foundations is enormous the very good example of the rcc structures because uh, we can construct the very tall structures by using the reinforced cement concrete a very good example is the burj khalifa which is located in uh, dubai so this is a this is the present world's largest structure which is constructed in rcc only so just go through the various structures which have been constructed by using rcc and just try to enlist those kind of structures so for the first lecture we stop here thank you